Hey, praise the Lord. It is I, Brother Clinton, once again, and you are back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people and the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. If you'll open your Holy Bible, King James Version, to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, I'd like to share something very simple and very powerful with you. May God bless the reading of his word. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. That's the part I want to share with you. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Let's read the whole verse, though, see who this is talking about. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is the heritage. What's the heritage? That means something that you have inherited. It means something that belongs to you. This is the heritage of who? Of people that go to church? Of people that call themselves Christians? Of people that say that I'm a Lutheran and I'm a Pentecostal and I'm a Baptist and I'm a Catholic or I'm a this or that? No, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The servants of the Lord. The servants of the Lord don't call themselves Baptists or Lutherans or Catholics or Pentecostals or any other thing. They call themselves by the name of the Lord. We are Christians. The Bible says that, is, that the disciples of the Lord are called Christians. Okay, So those of us who are Christians are those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and repented and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and received the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's how you become a Christian. You don't become a Christian by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not written in the scripture anywhere. You don't become a Christian by making a decision for Christ, or by joining a church, or by holding up your skateboard at a rally. You become a Christian by obeying the gospel that the that the, pardon me that the apostles of Jesus Christ preached from the day that the New Testament began. On the day of Pentecost, they began to preach, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That means that's for the pardon or forgiveness of your sins. That's how your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which according to the scripture will cause you to speak in other tongues, other languages that you've never learned before. That's how you become a Christian. And if you continue in the Word of God, abiding in the Word of God and doing what He says, then you are a servant of the Lord. And this verse of the Scripture applies to you. Okay? If, that doesn't, if what I just said doesn't describe you, then this verse of the Scripture doesn't apply to you, at least not yet, until you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Why am I saying this? Because, as I've said many times on this channel recently, more and more, in fact, in these last uh, recent days, there are many, 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 many people who are writing to me, especially young people who are writing to me, saying that they are being attacked by blasphemous thoughts. Attacked by blasphemous thoughts. And, you know, that's, that's something that's been going on for a long time, and it's a very popular trick of the enemy. He tried it on me when I was first born again as well. And I was in tears thinking that I had blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And I didn't have anyone on YouTube to write to. I talked to those who were disciples with me and they didn't really offer me much help. But I went to the Lord and I went to his word. And he showed me the, the answer to my dilemma. And he showed me that I had not committed any sin that was unpardonable. And I continued to serve him. And here I am today, 25 years later, serving the Lord with this worldwide ministry that he has given me and preaching the truth of the gospel in the midst of a world filled with darkness and, and religious people preaching lies and theology and all their nonsense and garbage. Other gospels that are no gospels. This ministry is a light shining in the darkness to preach unto you the true gospel of Jesus Christ so that you can know who Jesus Christ is and know how to not only obey the gospel and be saved from your sins, but how to serve God and be saved from the wrath to come. That's why this ministry is here. And when I was about six months old in the Lord, the devil came to me and caused me to do something stupid. 
And I thought that I had blasphemed the Holy Ghost, and I was crying, I was broken. I thought it was over for me. And you know what? It was a trick. And he's doing the same thing to many people all over the world. All over the world. And, and more and more I'm hearing from young people that are writing to me, asking me, you know, I did this and that, I said this and that. Have I blasphemed the Holy Ghost? Will God ever forgive me? Well, of course God will forgive you if you obey his gospel and come to him. The devil is the one who has come to you and tricked you and, and into thinking that you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost and you can never be forgiven. But that aside, more and more I'm hearing from people, even brothers. A young brother tonight, earlier this evening, wrote to me. A young brother who is sound in the faith and he's strong in the Lord. And he has been he's being attacked by blasphemous thoughts. Thoughts going through his mind. And he, and he, he said unto me, Brother, in fact, let me just, if I can find his email right here. Let me open it up for you. It's not that one. Um, here it is right here. He said in the last part of his email, What has me sad is that I've never seen myself in this type of situation before during my whole walk with the Lord. I've always had, pardon me, I, I've always had the victory in Christ Jesus and I have always been fighting the good fight. I've always been the one who knows how to deal with my fear and turn it into aggression against the enemy. And amen, that's exactly what we should be doing. Um, I injected those words. Let me continue with his letter. He says, And to continue to do that which the Lord hath called me to do. But this is a different, more harsh attack than I have ever experienced. I hope and pray to get up and to be where I was before this attack. Okay? Now, having shared that with you, I want to share something else with you. A brother that I've known for a couple of years who is also an elder in the Lord, he's a young man in the flesh, but he's an elder in the Lord, told me just yesterday that as he was at the airport waiting for another brother to come in, that he, this brother who was at the airport waiting, that he was attacked by blasphemous thoughts. This is a, a, a young brother who is an elder, an elder in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was attacked by blasphemous thoughts. He related this to me via a, a WhatsApp message on my telephone. And I thought, no, that's kind of odd. He was at the airport. This clicked in my, in my head. He was at the airport in the cell phone lot waiting for this brother to come in, waiting this brother, you know, for this brother to come in so he could call him and say, I'm here, so he could drive up and, and, you know, and pick him up and drive away with him. And he was attacked by blasphemous thoughts. Thoughts that were being projected into his mind that were speaking blasphemies against the Lord. Okay, now this email, the part of this email that I've shared with you, and this experience that I've shared with you from this brother who was at the airport yesterday, is what I want to talk to you about. And I hope that you're paying particular attention, because this is something that everybody needs to know about. And, and of a truth, very few people are going to watch this video uh, compared to the entire population. And very few people who watch this video are going to understand or even agree with what I'm talking about. But it's the truth. We are living in the 21st century. And there are toys which the so-called elite of this world have access to which are far greater than anything that you and I have ever imagined. And that which I'm talking to you about is not something that's secret anymore. It's It's something that's Pardon me, it's common knowledge. You can find out, if you do a Google search for it, you can find out a lot about it. It's something called voice-to-skull technology. And it is a technology by which the evil workers in the intelligence community in this world are able to project the appearance or the similitude of a voice that sounds like an audible voice into your mind. Okay? It would sound like an audible voice, like somebody standing right beside you or behind you talking to you. But it can't be heard by anybody else except those into whose brains it is being projected. In fact, there was an experiment performed several years ago that a, an operative spoke about in an interview just a little while ago that I heard um, about. Uh, well, it's, it had to do with um, some CIA operatives that are called Al-Qaeda. For those of you who don't know, Al-Qaeda is a CIA organization. And there were some Al-Qaeda members that were kind of being bad boys and they were being disobedient to the rest of the CIA. They weren't playing ball the way they were, that they were supposed to. And they were waging war against some soldiers, some, some U.S. soldiers, when they weren't supposed to be. And so these people went in on the scene and they projected 
words into the minds of these Islamists, these Al-Qaeda operatives, and they told them through this voice-to-skull technology, this is Allah, put down your guns and surrender. They spoke this into the brains, into the minds of those men, so that they heard them, so that those men heard that voice as it were an audible voice. And you know what? They all put down their guns and surrendered. And the battle was over without even anyone having to fire a shot because of voice-to-skull technology. Because they projected a voice into the brains of those men, into the minds of those men that caused them to think that they were hearing the voice of God. Like an audible voice. Insomuch that they, on the battlefield with guns, ready to die for, you know, for their cause, put down their weapons and walked out with their hands up and surrendered. Boom, right into the hands of the enemy. Didn't have to fire a shot. They took them captive, did whatever they did with them. I say that to say this. There is technology that exists, and I've said this to the brethren in private messages to the, to the saints, and I've also spoken it, of it briefly here on YouTube. There are radio frequency weapons all around you. Okay? The phone that you have in your hand is a transmitter of it. Pardon me, it's a receiver of it. Um, the transmitters are on the poles all around you, and they've just upgraded the entire system to 5G now, 5 gigs. So it's, it's like, I don't know how many times stronger than 4 gigs was. I'm not an expert in that, but it's quite a bit stronger than the 4 gig system was. And now, you, just about every person in the world has a phone, a cell phone. And that phone is something that your owners have put into your hand, not only to track you with, but also to control you with. And evil workers are able to project voices into your mind by the use of radio frequency and psychotronic weaponry to cause you to think that you're hearing voices. Now, I'm not saying this is only technological. It is spiritual. It is spiritual, and it comes from your enemy, the devil. And the devil has been sending many spirits all over the place in a frenzy to try to get people to think that they have blasphemed the Holy Ghost and they can't come to Jesus Christ. There is a, 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 a literal campaign of Satan in these last days right now that we're living in where devils are running around whispering in people's ears and tricking people and trying to get them to think that they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost and can never be forgiven. And 99% and, and of these people have never known the Lord Jesus Christ. They've never obeyed the gospel of Christ. They're not Christians, but they think that they are because of the deception in the world whereby I used to think I was a Christian too before I ever obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ because of what I was taught in church. So these people aren't Christians and they, and they can't possibly curse their own God because they don't even know God. But yet they, they're tricked into saying something out of their mouths or even having a thought. And then the, this devil that, that, that came to them and tricked them will whisper into their ear, now you've blasphemed God. Now you can never be saved. And, and they're trying their best to cause people to turn away from God and to cause people to think that they can never come to God. And on top of that, the, the human agents of Satan in this world, the humans who are working for Satan in this world, are using RF weaponry to project voices into the minds of people to project voices into your skull to cause you to hear voices and you could be standing in a room with filled with other people and they can project voices into your skull that nobody around you can hear but it sounds to you in an audible voice they can even turn up the volume so loud that it'll make you want to cover your ears that's what kind of toys we're dealing with my friends and my brothers and sisters so those of you who have been attacked by this I want you to realize that this is an attack from the devil, and it is, in, in many cases, it's an electronic attack that is being perpetrated against you because you live on your phone. Because you have your phone in your pocket, or, you know, if you're a girl, a lot of times girls have their phone tucked between their breasts, radiating their breasts, you know, to make sure that in 10 years they get breast cancer, or sometimes stuck in the waistband of their pants to make sure that in 10 years they won't be able to have children anymore because they're radiating their ovaries. Uh, and you know, and, and men do it too. You know, walking around with their phone in their front pocket of their pants. You know, radiating their testicles so that they, so that they won't be able to have children. Well, why do you think your owners gave you those telephones? They're making you sterile. They're giving you cancer. They're tracking you, and they're being used to do harmful things to you and to molest you and to cause you to think that you're hearing the voices of devils and that and these thoughts that are coming into your mind, these words that are coming into your mind, these blasphemous thoughts. 
If you will turn off your telephones and put them away and stop being on the phone all day, you will realize that that will go away. At least a lot of it will go away. And the most importantly, the thing that will cause it to go away is by walking in Jesus Christ. Because if you're walking in Jesus Christ, if you're a servant of God, then no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Now, I want to say something really quick in closing. If the, the, if the voices that you're hearing, when you're hearing voices in your head that are blasphemous thoughts, there's one of two things that it could be. Either it is unclean spirits, devils, whispering in your ear, in which case, if you rebuke them in the name of the Lord Jesus, they will stop and they will leave. If you rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus and it doesn't stop and it doesn't leave, then it is electronic. And what you, do, what you need to do is make sure to get your electronics away from you. Turn your phone off. If it has a battery, take the battery out. Put it away. Put it away. You don't need it. If you need it to make a phone call, fine. Put the battery in it. Make a phone call. Then take the battery out. Put it in the drawer. You need to get used to living without looking at your screen. You need to get used to living without a screen. You need to get used to living life and actually talking to people and doing constructive things instead of looking at your phone all the time. Being on Facebook, being on WhatsApp, doing this and that thing with your phone. Be honest with yourself. How many hours a day are you awake? And out of those waking hours, how many hours of that day do you spend with your phone in your hand? Probably a scary amount of hours. If you're awake 16 hours in the day, you probably have your phone in your hand 12 hours out of the day, if you're an average person. Looking at your screen, even if you don't have anything to do, you're just sitting there... Doing this, I see people on the bus all the time, people that have Facebook. They're just like this all the time, going down the list, looking at stupidness and nothingness. You know, stupid memes and pictures and posts that people put on there, looking at oh, why. It means nothing. It's absolutely worthless. It's, all it's doing is wasting your time. That's what Facebook is for. So the reason that you're hearing these voices is one of two things. It's either unclean spirits or it's an electronic attack. If it's unclean spirits, you can rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and it will stop. And if you rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and it doesn't stop, then it's an electronic attack and you know how to stop it now. Okay, Disable your phone, put it away, you don't need it to live. Okay, You can breathe, you can eat, you can walk around, you can have relationships, you can do everything you need to do in life without your phone. And then come away from the radio frequency signals that are bombarding you. And then come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Obey his word. Because you know what? I don't have that problem. Okay, And I'm not saying that I could never have that problem because the Bible says, you know, he that thinketh he standeth, let him take heed lest he fall. And like I told you, an elder under this ministry had that same problem. When he went to the airport and he was in the cell phone lot. This is the only time that this has ever happened to him, and he told me about it today. It happened to him yesterday. He was in the cell phone lot at the airport, at the Atlanta airport, one of the busiest airports in the entire world. Now, where else would the RF field be stronger than just about anywhere else? Where else would someone be sitting in their car and being bombarded with, with enormous amounts of radio frequency? Right there in the cell phone lot at the Atlanta airport. And he was bombarded with blasphemous thoughts. And he couldn't get rid of them. And he didn't realize it when he spoke that message to me. But it, it clicked in my mind and I, I messaged him back. And I said, brother, look at where you were. That's never happened to you before. You're a Christian. That's never happened to you before. And why would that happen to you? It happened to you because you were sitting in the cell phone lot, in the cell phone parking lot at the, uh, one of the world's busiest airports. And you were sitting right in the middle of an RF battlefield. You see? So those are the two reasons that you could be hearing blasphemous voices, blasphemous words with voices in your head. Now you know what to do about it. And the most important thing is get right with God. Serve God. Obey His gospel and serve Him. Because if you're His servant, then no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Isaiah fifty-four seventeen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.